Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Magically Cruising, the cruise podcast where we share our personal cruise tips and reviews to help you make the most out of your next sailing. My name's Kira and I'm an independent travel agent specialising in all things cruise, Disney and North America and I'm joined by my fellow co-host. Hi, I'm Sarah and I write over at Cruising with Kids and Mini Travellers. And Sarah, this week you've chosen the topic, so would you like to tell the guys where we're going to be sailing to today? Yep, I have chosen. It's a controversial one, actually, I think, because a lot of people don't like it. But it's really? one of my favourite Italian cruise ports. Yeah, a lot of people said they don't like it, but I love it. Uh, and that's Naples. Okay. So I've never been, so you are going to have to be my tour guide, and I've done very little cruising around Italy. And when I did visit Italy, <laughs> I stayed on the ship. Um, which is a rookie error and something I'm hoping to rectify in the next couple of weeks when I go back. But um, I've never been to Naples. So do you want to start off? What can people expect when they arrive? Do you know what? This, and this is the thing with Naples. There is so, so much. Um, so we've been, I don't know, six, seven times. And every time you go, it's different. And we've done, we've booked a few tours. We've done a lot of wandering. Um, and it's just different every time. So there's loads of stuff to do in the port. So, I mean, I suppose we'll go for it bit by bit. But the the biggest thing, obviously, or the biggest two things are Pompeii and Herculean. So we did Pompeii years ago. Um, and do you know much about Pompeii? I know a little bit because I've had customers who've kind of gone to Sorrento. So kind of I know it's around the area. I've never been personally. I've done very little of Italy personally. So it's all new to me. So Pompeii is at the base of Mount Dubius. And when it erupted god years and years ago i think people were given like so it was like a, a limited warning to get out of the town so a lot didn't um and as the ash came down the uh, lava it just froze the town so everything just got frozen history so you could go and visit and walk around i mean it's quite alarming some of it um yeah you've got people that are frozen and dogs where really? the ash is frozen them so and it's a whole town. It's still got the paintings on the walls. Wow. And over the years, they've restored it. So it's it's one of those that you can get attracted to, but I'd recommend doing a tour. But that is, I'd say, the most popular thing that people do in Naples. Yeah. And I think if you go and you haven't been, you've got to because it is incredible. And it's it's all inspiring that you go, I'm going to find the date. Let me just find the date. So it was, it erupted in 79 AD. So that's how long ago it is. Oh, it wow. Was, okay, um, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, it's, not, it's not like a couple of years ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it just blows your mind. So it's fifth, about 15 miles from the cruise port. Okay. Um, obviously, we've seen in the news this week about the people that didn't get back from their tour and the ship left them. And that does happen. They will yeah. do it. So I, I think this is one of them that I will do the tour personally. And not only that, when you get to somewhere like Pompeii, you can pay and go in as an entrance fee. Or you can do a tour. You need to do the tour because, I mean, they even had a brothel. They had all sorts in there. <laughs> well, and, I guess yeah, the I time don't... period, didn't it? It was quite like the thing, wasn't it? Every town, every corner. Yeah. And they've got like signs of how to find the brothel. And and you need to go to see it, but you need a guide to tell you and to explain. Because, it, I mean, it's even got, you know, like the old, is it called Pantheons with the Philip pillars? And it's got them. It's, it's massive. So, yeah, that is uh, the the main thing that people go to Naples for. Yep. But Naples is so much more than Pompeii. Yeah. Well, just because you touched upon it briefly as well, should we explain in case somebody has listened and they've never cruised before, what's the difference between kind of private excursions and the risks and the pros of doing that? And then I guess um, if you book the cruise excursion, because obviously you've just touched upon it about people getting left at the, at the terminal. Mm. If you've never cruised before... Should we explain to people kind of the risks of booking private tours versus booking package tours? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's a massive risk. <laughs> but obviously, the ship tours are so much more expensive, aren't they? I mean, some of yeah. them you look. I mean, the very first trip we did to Rome when the boys were little and there was four of us cost us a thousand pounds. It's crazy, isn't you know, it? Absolutely think, crazy. Why did we pay that when we could have got the train for six euros? Um, so they are expensive, but there's some things that is just better to do with the cruise ship absolutely yeah. people might disagree with me i think i think pompeii is one of them yeah um but then you can also book self tours and self tours are brilliant i mean you've got things like get your guide now and you can go and and book tours when you're in pole yeah and the great thing about them is that obviously they're so much cheaper you get local guides um i mean you get local guides with the cruise lines no doubt but um but the, the downside of that is that if they change your cruise port 
you've lost your money yep. unless you can get one that doesn't take the money on the day. Yeah. And if they're late getting you back, the ship will go without you. Where if you're on a dedicated ship tour arranged by the cruise line, they will make sure that you get back to the ship. So if you do your own tour, you've got to, I think you've got to arrange to get back at least an hour before. Yeah, minimum, if not more type of thing. And obviously, depending yeah. on the further away you are is how much of a window you want to have. And I think I always use the rule of if you're looking at an excursion and there's usually like an hour or two transport time in that, maybe consider booking that with a cruise line because if the van breaks down or if something goes wrong, the tour company has no liability to get you back to the ship in time. Whereas obviously if you're booked on a packaged excursion with a cruise ship, then they will obviously do their best to get you back to the ship or they will be the ones responsible to get you back to the ship. So it definitely is the safer option, the further the field you go type of thing. If you're just exploring around the town centre and you can see the ship, you're probably going to be safe to book something. But again, if you are booking third party, just make sure you triple check the um, return time when your tour should get you back to make sure it's well before all aboard time. And obviously, when ships post that they're leaving at five, that won't be the all aboard time. That's usually when they're leaving as well. So just factor in as well that you may have to be on board the ship a good half hour maybe before the time that may be posted on the web. Every cruise line's different. Some that's the all aboard time, some that's the time they're leaving port. So you just want to be cautious about that as well don't assume five o'clock is the time you've got to get on the ship five o'clock could be the time the ship's leaving yeah that's because actually it's not like getting a train at all is it <laughs> and i mean those people that they left were at the port weren't they yeah um, but yeah. i think they assumed that the audible time was the leaving time and once they're set off and the doors are shut i mean they managed to get in their passports didn't they? <laughs> they that's the first thing they, they do yeah way. First thing they do is they check your cabin to see if your passport's in it. And if they can find your passport, they leave it with the local port authorities. They're gone. <laughs> Off they go. I mean, it is scary because, but do you know what? I, I'm bad for this. Just for TikTok, every cruise we go on, I wait while hoping <laughs> for a peer runner. I've never had one yet. I've never oh, had one. I've never had one either. I'm so just... jealous of everyone who sees them all the time. I'm, I'm like, like one day. On <laughs> 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 just it's making us bad people. All right? A little bit. <laughs> It's like definitely a million views on TikTok, right? <laughs> but yeah, every time I'm looking out for them, they're never there. Never there. <laughs> so the thing about Naples, and I think the, the side that people say is a negative side, is that people talk about muggings and not muggings, pickpockets and stuff. But, and yes, but London's really bad for it. Rome's really yes. bad for it. Barcelona's yes. really bad for it. So yes, there's a risk, but there's a risk everywhere. So I think, you just got to be careful, haven't you? I mean, I was watching a TikTok video the other day and someone was saying um, in poll, if someone says, is this your wallet, they're doing it to check. So you go, if you no. have one. Yeah. So they show you identify yeah, so where they... your wallet is. Yeah. So I suppose you've got to be careful stuff like that. I've just bought um, a bag and it's um, it's meant to be, let's say, and fingers crossed, it's an anti-theft bag. So it's one of them you can't scan, you can't cut oh, through the, right, yeah. um, straps with knives it, and it's got like a mesh to stop you cutting through it. So, and I bought that thinking, it, I actually bought it for Paris, to be quite fair. Um, but I thought it's handy when you're in Pulse, isn't it? It's lightweight Definitely, and you've got yeah. something like that. But, but I don't ever let that put you off because this is one of my favourite places to visit. And and yeah, Italy is known for being dirty, isn't it? You go, I mean, I remember the first time I went to Rome thinking, it's just so dirty. There's graffiti yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Um, but that's part of Italy. It's, that's part of the culture, stunning. though, isn't it? It's part of the history. And everyone says about Paris as well, like how Paris is really dirty, it's full of graffiti and everything. But that is just the culture of that town and how it's evolved nowadays type of thing. So you just have to take that with it. We all we talked about it in the Mykonos episode about that picture-perfect postcard moment. Mm. There are destinations like that where you used to get that. And there are parts of all these modern cities like Paris where you get that postcard-perfect moment. But turn to the left and you're going to see the reality these are cities where people live and make their living every single day so you're going to have to take those postcard moments with the reality of this is what it's like at the end of the bin's got to be collected every week and all that type of stuff but i think it for for naples i think the postcard moments are the chaos so for example i mean pizza originated from naples i think that's what all the, that's what all the television programs tell us don't they? <laughs> and, um, so Gino De Campo said it. He did it. <laughs> I, that makes when he went time. He's, he, I think he's from Naples, isn't he? Um, I'm pretty sure, it, yeah. And he's truly the best pizza I've ever had. But we once went to this little pizzeria on a back street. And we I've got the pictures on my wall. It's probably on the blog. It was years ago. And I've got some more this time. And we sat on this street. And when you look up, it's like you've got railings and you've got washing hanging off. And people are pulling washing lines and 
And one lady come along and she got a washing bag, a uh, shopping bag, put it on a hook, went in and pulled it up on a pulley. Really? Yeah. And it's stuff like that. It's the chaos that I think is so beautiful about Naples. So when you get off the ship, and I think this is really important because it's so overwhelming because MSC, um, they dock and pull a lot of ships in. So there's a lot of people getting on and getting off cruises at Naples. Um, and I suppose the Italians and, is a big turnaround port for them. And I would guess as well, is it Aida as well? Is Aida? I can never remember. We have this every year. Costa, sorry. Costa is also as well. The big Italian cruise yeah, line. I've never, I've never seen a Costa ship anywhere in Paul. Really? Never. Mm. Mm. But also you've got lots of ferries, haven't you? So in Italy you've got all the ferries. Yes. Um, yeah. You've got the ferries that you can get across all the islands. And it's chaos. You get out and it's huge. And obviously everybody's driving the different way so that confuses me straight away um and you've got cars coming in out you've got taxis coming in out buses people with suitcases it is pandemonium yeah. in naples so you've got to if you want to go to the historic center you get off and you've just got to go forward okay and just walk and you end up forward and you're up in the historic bit and then that's where you've got like the archaeological museum uh, all the buildings and all the historic balconies it's all up there and I mean, yeah, you've got some modern shops up there, but it's just, it's stunning. You've just got to walk up there. You've got, um, I need to find the name of this building. I mean, I'm just looking through the pictures I've got and they're just, it, it is just absolute pandemonium. It's hot. The, the pavements are narrow. I've got so many things to do in Naples. Is this one of those, like, is it like, and I, we've said, I've said it before, I'm quite vocal about it, but is it the Mediterranean port experience as well, though? So kind of you get in, it's like a lot of the Mediterranean ports where there's lots of marinas, um, lots of seafood restaurants on the front type of thing, and then obviously churches. Is there a lot of that type of Mediterranean culture? There is. There is. Um, but a lot of people miss it. And this that, that was why I really wanted to talk about this today, because everybody goes up and goes forward, and you've got to do that. You've got to go up and go forward in Naples, and you've got to experience the historical, um, the streets and the pizza and the chaos. And because and you walk up and up and up, and, and there's, um, I can't, I'm trying to find the name of the building. There's this big building where it's like a, around a big square, and there's a museum in there. You've um, There's lots of... For one, I, we go every time and I haven't got it in my post. I think I that's think the one I'm those... looking at now. Um, I'm on Celebrity's website. Uh... It's like white and it's got a dome and it goes round. It's got all pillars. Let's have a look. They've got a picture of it anyway, but they haven't named. Uh, what's this now? How to travel, cruise, surrender. No, they've got a picture of it, but they haven't named the building, which is very helpful of Celebrity. Do you know <laughs> what? I've done, it on, I've done it on TikTok, but I've, it's not on the blog. But I think it's one of the places I've just... You take the garage, you walk in, it's there. Then you walk up behind it and you've got all these winding streets and chaos. And it's just incredible. So that's the first thing you need to do. The second thing, which I haven't done, which is at the top of my list, and I didn't do it last week, last time, and you have to do a tour for it, is the catacombs. Yes. Yeah, and the catacombs, yeah, yeah. apparently, they've got tunnels all under the town and, and you can, like, they literally stack the bones and it's meant to be phenomenal um oh, i don't know how i feel about that see list. i'm really like freaked out by things like that but yeah i guess because that's a big genre of travel in itself though as well the people who kind of like that um i wouldn't suppose say horror travel that's not what that is but that kind of history and ghoulish history ghoulish tourism mm. type of thing and seeing kind of the um the history and the underbelly of a destination as well that's a, a really big thing and europe's perfect for that there's lots of opportunities to kind of visit lots of old as you say catacombs and churches cathedrals type of thing and see all the ancient ancient history there are loads and loads of cathedrals and the inner day poles there's just loads this comes back to the with a lot of these destinations and these places to go there's so much to write about because i I've been writing some of my trip reports recently type of thing. And I was like, oh, I'll do three days in one. Surely I can fit, you know, a lot. But then when you start actually going through all the things you've seen, all the things you've done, and they're all of interest to people as well because they're little small pieces. But there's a lot of history that you kind of see in a lot of these destinations. And this one blog that was meant to be three days in one has turned into um, a day per a, a blog per day because I've written over 2,000 words on just the first day alone and getting arriving in Budapest. So it's surprising, isn't it, how much you can see in such a small space of time in these European cities? That's it. And I mean, when you go, as I say, we, there's so much to do. And that's why people in Naples always miss, which is my favourite part, which I'll tell you about, which is behind me. Um, but there is so much to do because you've got the cathedral. You've got um, a giant shopping centre, Casso de Alora, I think it's called. And there's not, the ships, the, sh the ships, the shops really aren't 
fantastic. Oh, there's a few nice shops, but it's the big glass dome. Mm. And again, that's just before you get up into the historic bit. And you, you sort of walk through it and it's a, it's just all panes of square. You know how they do that, the Italians, and yeah. make a big glass dome. Almost like a Duomo, but it's in a shopping centre. And then the, the floor's all mosaic. So you, you've got to see that. So that's all the historic. And as I say, you've got the, you've got the theatre, um, you've got the museums. But then my absolute favourite is if you come out of the pool and go left. And you've got to be careful getting to it from the historic bit because there's a motorway tunnel that you want to avoid, or like a car tunnel. But, but if you carry on walking along the, the front, along the pole, you come out at, uh, I get the name. I mean, my brain is in Florida. I say you're in pre holiday mode now. You can see. I know. <laughs> yeah. The Lunga Mare, that's it. So, it's the, so if you come out and go left, and you, it's quite a bit of a walk, but you end up at the Lunga Mare. And the Lunga Mare was. Um, where years and years ago, it's like the promenade seafront and it's where Naples middle class used to go. Um, and today, it, they've, what they've done is, as you walk along, I mean, you can see Vesuvius in the background, you can see the ships, but then they've put in beach areas, there's a Lido, um, and then as you go along, you've got little marinas like the one behind me. So you've got all these marina areas where you can go, have cocktails, have lunch, they've got fresh fish. It is stunning. Nice. I and mean, we were there. We were stood in this little marina and like local kids are just jumping in and out of the water to cool off because it was so hot. It's absolutely incredible. It's If you go, and I always do this on my TikTok, I say if you went to Naples and you didn't like it, you didn't turn left. Because, <laughs> I mean, I love I love all of Naples, but turning left is, and it's like Central Pay almost. It's, really? It's cosmopolitan. Like you say, that real Mediterranean experience. Yeah. yeah. And it's quieter oh, because you go... You go forward, it's it's manic, it's chaos, it's it's everything that you expect Naples to be with the smells, the flavours, um, the pizza. But then you, as you go left, it's also I ordered though. <laughs> so it's a bar and ordered a white wine and soda, but they got it mixed up the soda and thought I don't know how they got it mixed up, but they put it with plaid lemonade. Plaid lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that keeps happening. Yeah, is it is? Yeah. <laughs> Is it a white one? You go soda and lemonade. Yeah, it's happened. I know what a lot of yeah. people happen when you go some places in Europe and you ask for like a wine or lemonade, and they'll give you cloudy lemonade or wine. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, like this is great. a choice. <laughs> Honestly, and it was like, well, I'm so thirsty, but uh, um, <laughs> but yeah, and it's worth. I mean, there's so many restaurants down there, um, and then you've got the Palazzo. So there's also like a tiny little island offshore and you've got the Palazzo Donna Anna, I hope I've said that, which was a 17th century palace, which is now a museum. So it's just stunning. You've got like rock, you could do like walking yeah. the rocks and walking the edge of the river, river, sea. Um, it's stunning. It does look beautiful. I'm looking at like different blogs and different um, pictures because like I said, I've never been and I have an expectation of what certain... Um, cruise ports are like but it does look beautiful and there's something about that italian kind of um architecture they do in a lot of these mediterranean mm. ports in italy type of thing where they have just those beautiful mm. buildings in the distance type of thing but you get that hustle and bustle of how people live and the little small houses as well sometimes the houses they look small from the outside anyway mm. i've never been inside them to see how big they actually are but they all look really small and i'm guessing that's a lot of it's kind of the heat and things like that because obviously then less mm. smaller windows less heat type of thing it does look incredible, and food seems to feature quite a lot. And a lot of the the things I'm looking at, mm. they all talk about pizza. They all talk about um, so, you know, gelato, food, food like that type of thing. It's all these amazing things that you know and love about Italy. It is. It's stunning. It's just I, I just think it's a sensory overload, Naples, and I think people find it overwhelming, which I think is what puts a lot of people off. But actually, if you go over a bit of a plan, obviously Pompeii, definitely you've got Herculeum. Um, which Karen's just been this week, so uh, she's sent across all the stuff for that. And she, she said it was brilliant, amazing. Really? Top tip is if if you want to, you don't want to go in Herculean, but you want to have a look. If you walk to the front door, this is a tip from Karen, um, from our many travellers. If you walk to the pay booth, you walk along the top so you can actually see in it. Right. Okay, cool. There now, you that go. Wouldn't be enough. that wouldn't be enough for me. Um, I want to go in and hear the stories of the people, and but you can see it. Um but yeah, so so obviously you've got those, then you've got your historic part, and then you've got the metropolitan 
beach part, which is just absolutely beautiful. I was going to ask about that beaches because you think for a lot of people, the reason why maybe they don't necessarily gravitate towards Naples is it because they may be thinking of a beach break. So obviously a lot of mainly British people, when they look to go on holiday, were very keen to kind of jump to the beach and sit on the beach or relax type of thing. Is there a beach nearby and can people do that if they wanted to? There are beach areas as you walk along, you can see them. Yep. But I don't know how accessible they are. Um, there's, and there's there's like, it's like big stones. Like there's areas, I'm just looking now. And I remember Joe running along and Jack when they were little. Giant stones and then it's all on the waterfront. Right, okay. And then okay. you've got like boats moored. Um, but I think they have created beach areas. There was definitely one in the marina we sat in. Um, and there's also a Lido right on the front. Oh, nice. Okay. So if people are looking to kind of just relax and splash down, cool down on land rather than on the ship, there are options for them then to do that if they wanted. Oh, definitely, definitely. There's loads down there, and uh, there's there's a park. Um, it's, there's all sorts. I mean, you've actually got as well. You've got the Cas- Castel del. I can't say it. Although I'm terrible at this, aren't I? <laughs> okay, right. Um, and that's basically a medieval castle. It's like out on the Bay of Naples that you can get to. Um, and that was back in the 12th century, which was part of the, you know, when you go in the old fortified, with the things with it. Yeah, bow and arrow things through and you know, protected the the, uh, the city. So you've got that there as well. So you've got all these different things you look you can look at. You've got the history, you've got the new, you've got the old. It's just it is just an absolute overwhelming. But there's so much choice. Oh, it sounds like it as well. And I'm just looking at some of like the top highlights type of thing. And as you say, you've obviously got then Sorrento as well, which is kind of reachable if you wanted to go off and do Sorrento as well. Yeah, you've got so much you could achieve and do and. Yeah, it does sound like an incredible place to visit if you're willing to put the time in. And there are some ports that are very easy just to kind of rock off the ship oh. and just have a wander around and you can make your day quite easily. But some ports do require a bit of pre-planning and possibly then Naples could just be that. You just need to know where to head to rather than just wandering around aimlessly because it sounds like quite a large town or city. To, yeah, it's a city. Um, seems like quite a large city to kind of explore. And yeah, and we've done that before. Some days we, we'll just go and, and wander aimlessly because... That's I like that. That's yeah. my, my thing, um, because you never know what you're going to find. Then, do you? Yeah. But um, last time we went with the plan that we'd do the historic centre, then we'd go down and have cocktails on the front. Um, but you could also, so you can get the train to Sorrento, but you can get a ferry to Capri. I think I've got that the right way around. Okay. Um, so you can book a private boat. I'm just looking now at it, and we never got to. We planned to go to Capri last time, and it's forty to fifty minutes on the ferry. And Donna said it was really easy, but it was honestly, it was turnaround day. Well, for, there were several ships all turning around and it was chaos. And I think we just got off a bit late and I think we wouldn't have got back in time. But you get off and you walk because you've got your cruise port terminal and then the ferry terminal's next door. So you've got your board so you can get, you just jump on a ferry. If you get off early, you can just go straight over to Capri. And obviously that 40 minutes on a ferry is nothing, is it, to go no, and see someone no. like Capri? Or you can get a helicopter if you're loaded. <laughs> Have you ever done a helicopter tour before? Not just in general, like in the Grand Canyon, we did it rather than did do you? the bus. We did it, went across and landed in the Grand Canyon. Yeah, right. nice. It was amazing, and that's yeah. the only way to see it. I think. I we, well, we didn't do the Grand Canyon when we went. Sorry, jumping off now. We didn't go to Vegas. Uh, well, sorry, when we went to Vegas, we didn't do the Grand Canyon. We couldn't be bothered to make the effort to go down there. But I've done a helicopter tour of. Of all places, Orlando, <laughs> I've done a helicopter oh. tour of the flattest part of the world. <laughs> I've done a helicopter tour. But that was just cool, just to kind of go around and fly. You can't fly over Disney World. You can fly over kind of part of it down by Epcot and Animal Kingdom. So that, just, that was cool to get to see that and fly over Universal. But that was a very, very long time ago. Yeah, we did the strip, actually. But um, obviously, that was just that was the aftermath of the sunrise sailing, yeah, sailing, uh, flying into... The Grand Canyon, but actually, that'd be a quite a good way, good way to do it in Naples. But yeah, you can get the ferry over and <laughs> save a fortune. So the, there's lots of options, but also again in cruise ports. I mean, with stuff like Uber now, you can you can safely get about. Um, look for registered taxis. There are registered taxis, um, so it is easier to get about, I think, than it ever was before. Mm, definitely and i think now that more of us as well have like smartphones as well because we do it all the time mm. we always pull up in port and we will just we re- we just google map a lot of stuff we really kind of check mm. or trip advisor and i have a love-hate relationship with trip advisor 
but we use that quite a lot sort of things to do in type of thing or there's loads of blogs out there as well you guys obviously have amazing blogs on yours of kind of poor yeah. guides as well they're great resources for kind of looking for those highlights of places to visit at the end of the day because yeah. you know you can definitely mill about and wander about and kind of see some great spaces but you can spend a lot of time we're really bad for it phil drives me crazy but we will walk for hours and see nothing just because that's how phil likes to explore whereas i'm definitely more of the person of i'm happy to walk if i know we're getting somewhere so i always like to kind of have a rough plan of like i would like to see this building or that thing and then i'm happy to do the walk-in whereas phil's definitely a free spirit and loves to wander and two hours later we've walked past 17 coffee shops and not been in one drives me crazy (laughs) yeah i think naples is somewhere well it's good to have a plan but you don't need one um but i think you've just got to get off and go for it because it's you know the amount of people that have said told me that they didn't get off at naples and like oh my god it is one of the best balls when you sailed then who did you sail with when you went i'm gonna guess it's royal but who did you sail Mm -hmm. with (laughs) (laughs) yes I thought you were going to surprise me and yeah. say it was someone like no. Carnival Cruise Line. No, it was Royal Caribbean. Of course it wasn't. It was Royal Caribbean. Uh, several, oh, every time I think, oh, once a princess, once a princess. Okay. Was it twice a princess? But yeah, all the rest were Royal Caribbean. And it's just, yeah. Uh, so you can, there was a lot to book as well. I mean, you have got lots of options to book, but I'm always one of them that never books the cruise tour. And then at the last minute nope. when I think I'm going to book it, it's gone. So yeah, and, yeah, 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 say, yeah. You can save a lot <laughs> <laughs> when you're on board yeah. the ship and you're tired and exhausted. You can't be bothered to work now. You're like, oh, I'll happily pay it now, <laughs> and you're like, oh, it's sold out. Oh yeah. well. <laughs> but no, I definitely recommend anyone that you know. We've got a great guide which I'll link in of things to do in Naples, and it in that guide I have put stuff I want to do as well as stuff we've done. Um, but we've done quite a lot, and um, we love it. It's it's definitely one that I'd recommend, and def and one that I would say. Is pivotal and when I'm choosing the cruise it I mean Chris will say we've been to so many Italian ports but my thing about Italian ports is and 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 Spanish Barcelona as well every time you go you see something different it's not like some ports where it's same 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 yeah it's, there's always they're something huge, different to they? do and see they're huge destinations mm. where they're always adding new things so even the time of year you go as well so there's always festivals obviously Europe is is so famous for kind of its regular festivals mm. and seasons to go you know as you're approaching kind of the end of the year the weather's going to be different the food's going to be different as well than when you go kind of peak summer so definitely there should always be something new and exciting to explore outside of the key kind of attractions yeah um so yeah you, you'd be hard pressed to go to any of these Mediterranean ports and find nothing to do um saying that i did have that in albia but other people went to albia and had a wonderful time i just saw nothing and i spent a long time looking um but yeah you know we've never been disappointed apart from albia when we've got off and just wandered around type thing to have a little look around Uh, i'm being hard on albia just because i was really disappointed by it because it was hyped up to be wonderful and it wasn't but other people said they saw wonderful things we just couldn't find them (laughs) so but yeah i think um what you gotta do is think like do i want to see I mean, I, again, I want to go into the San Carlo Theatre, the famous opera house. You know my obsession with theatre, so yeah. I can't believe I've never been there. But this is the thing when you go places like this is, you know, maybe research like churches for Kieran. <laughs> yeah, oh God, yeah, another church. I'm sure <laughs> no, we'd you be in love a church. a church for Phil. Um, so you've got your churches, that museums, um, sporting places, you know, so research what you want to do and then yeah. and then it's easier. It just makes it, I mean, obviously, I don't know how far Naples football stadium is i'm assuming that's nowhere near just not on my radar and not something i've ever mentioned because if i mention it we'd have to go i'd like that to be honest like i said i don't mention these churches or cathedrals or anything in any of the ports and i hope i can get through a port without finding it lo and behold though as i say the plan of googling when we get there that's the first thing phil looks for because i mean I, i remember just this is not Naples related, actually, but anybody with kids that like sports will absolutely get this. So I remember we were once in Bilbao and we'd done a thing where we all choose one thing to see. That's something we used to do when the boys were little. And Joe had, had a mystery thing on his mystery. Should have guessed. So we were <laughs> wandering the streets. He's following his phone. He was only about nine, ten, ten. And um, do you know what he was looking for? We spent half an hour watching when, when we finally got there. It was the Atletico Bilbao club shop. <laughs> so that cost me the cost of football strips in <laughs> Italy are eye watering. You're talking eighty quid. Yeah, so eighty yeah. quid on a bloody. I mean, 
he did have holiday savings, which he put towards. But um, yes, yeah. so just don't trust your kids. Don't don't let them do <laughs> mischief like things. So, uh, um, they would want to know what I'm committing to, type of thing. <laughs> and don't don't even get started. Don't start me on Camp New. I mean, but there is a good champagne bar in there, which um, we, we, we've never, you know, we've never done Barcelona. I mean, I think we just take that for granted that. But Barcelona's a whole. Have you never sailed from Barcelona? No, I said, we've never done a podcast on Barcelona. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we haven't. Which no. Is, like, why? Yeah, no, it's the biggest because... turnaround port in, in Europe, isn't it, as well, for kind of the international lines. We'll, do, lines, we'll yeah. do that. We will do that. But yeah, so we're, we're going off peak as usual. But um, but yeah, any questions, do do drop us a qu- uh a question where can you ask questions on podcasts i don't know no but you can obviously we do have social for the podcast um we're really bad at posting to it but we do have so we've got a facebook page if you just search <laughs> magically cruising cruise podcast we also have a tiktok that we every now and then post to when we remember about it same with instagram and twitter the best place however if you really want to ask questions is to hunt us down personally because i think we're just more likely to um, keep up to date with our personal socials than the podcast ones just because we're both very busy um, with all our content that keeping up to date with the extra socials for the podcast is is difficult we're trying we're getting better um, but it's just an extra thing on our to-do list each week that we always forget about so uh, where's the best place there if the guys want to hunt you down if they want to message you um, and ask you questions about your time in Naples or find your blogs where's the best place to get them anything to do with cruising with kids cruising for all I would for me I spend most of my time on the TikTok. So that is Cruising for All at Cruising for All. Donna's on Cruising with Kids Instagram more, um, but TikTok's more my happy place. So, mm-hmm. And we've actually got quite a bit of Naples content on there because I, I was so obsessed with it last time I went um, and every time I go. So, yeah, definitely you can ask us questions on there. And we have got videos and, and you can see what the Lunga Mare is like. Um, I think I've got some videos of going up the streets in Naples and other cruise ports as well but next week we've got something special haven't we mm-hmm. yeah but where it, were so, you first yo you're before me your cruise is before mine so we're likely to get your episode out first so where are you going next week so on saturday i'm flying to orlando no sunday saturday um and we're going to spend a week at universal and then we're going to do a five night royal caribbean cruise around mexico because my long-term best friend from school um is obsessed with chihuahuas she wants to go to the motherland <laughs> so so we're going to the motherland on a cruise so i said i'm only going on a cruise so that's how it happened so yeah. what we're going to try and do is we're going to film record a podcast it won't be live because but we're going to record a podcast from the mariner of the seas which is an older Royal Caribbean ship that's been done up. So I'm not going to be out and about on deck because I just don't know how that's possible, but I will be on the ship. So you you remember more, don't you, when you're on the ship? Definitely, yeah. I think it's going to be exciting as well to kind of get those impressions while you're on the ship type of thing and just see how the trip's going as it's happening. I think it's going to be very exciting um, for the podcast to kind of do that firsthand. So, yeah, looking forward to that. And then, weirdly, exactly the week after that, I am... In a shock to nobody, back on board Virgin Voyages <laughs> for <Yeah>. voyage number <laughs> nine <laughs> on board uh, the beautiful Scarlet Lady, one of my favourites. Um, so I'm going to be doing their Irresistible Med itinerary, uh, which is sailing from Barcelona and going to Toulon, Marina de Carrera, uh, the overnight in Ibiza. And there's another port that I always forget. There's another port anyway. So it's a lot of the Mediterranean ports anyway, but it's my favourite itinerary in the Med by Virgin Voyages. Um, just because it includes some of those beautiful... Oh, that's Ajacio. That's the other one. My favourite oh, port that I've been yeah. to so far. Um, Ajacio is just beautiful. So hopefully the weather's going to be lovely because it's an amazing port to kind of dock into. You're literally right there in the town centre. There's loads of places to eat and dine on the waterfront, which is my slice of heaven. Um, so looking forward to that. So we're equally then, the f- following episode um, is going to be as well, trying to film live from Virgin Voyages, Scarlet Lady as well. <laughs> so yeah. well, hope we've, we've done it at 11 in the morning both times. Because we're thinking free cocktail. <laughs> um, <laughs> although I might I might just have um, a champagne with breakfast. You never know. Definitely. Uh, but yeah, we're doing it in the morning pre cocktail. And then after yeah. that, we'll come back and then we'll do trip reports, won't we? And talk about the trip as a whole. But yeah, exciting. And just 
we talk obviously we think and talk and breathe cruise all the time so to, we've never tried to do it from a ship before have we even though we've both been cruising so and it's an interesting thing because the ship wi-fi has got so much better in the last two years as yes. well i remember like when we first were cruising ship wi-fi was almost a joke it was like dial up if nothing better and it was extortionately expensive Whereas now they've all got Starlink and they've all got multiple satellite working on the ship. Virgin have got two different networks on theirs to ensure the speed is up to scratch. And because I'm part of the loyalty club now, I get free premium Wi-Fi on Virgin as well. And when I last checked the speed, it was faster than my home Wi-Fi. Um, obviously, depends on how many people are on at the time and all that type of stuff. So it can vary. But yeah, all the cruise lines now have incredible Wi-Fi, which some people don't like. They don't like being connected still, but... I love still having Wi-Fi on the ship. It is a big perk for me, the fact that Virgin include Wi-Fi for free. Well, it's our job, isn't it? So you need it. So it's not really negotiable, is it? No, It it is a deciding factor for us now is how cheap is the Wi-Fi on board a ship. Because as you mentioned, I need it for work. I need to be in touch with customers when they're away. You know, if they want to book last minute or there's any problems, I can't. (laughs) Unfortunately, blessing and a curse, I love my job, but I can't be completely switched off for well, a week at a time type of thing. Unfortunately, I've got customers to look after. Can I mention one more thing before we go? Mm-hmm. Just because over at Cruiser with Kids, we're pivoting a bit and we're using our skills from our other blogs to bring something new to the blog. Um, something that we hope is fresh and unique. Well, it is fresh and unique because no one else is doing it on their blogs. So we are doing cruise magnets. So if you do like a cruise to decorate a cruise door, then do pop over and have a look because they're free to download. And what we're aiming to do is if any cruise groups want us to create a dated magnet, we've, we've, I've done it for my next cruise, um, then we can do that as well. So just pop over. So it's all free, um, but it'd be great. Just any support would be brilliant. But yeah, we're just trying to do something different in a world of sheep. No, it's really cool as well as to have something that's unique. Because I remember my first, I'm sorry, this is welcome to Magically Cruising and the tangent of the week, but... I'd, my Disney cruise, I said to you, what, Nair, this is how we got bonding was on our first ever trip we did together. It, the conversation of kind of cricket and crafting came up and cruise door decorating. Mm. And that's kind of how we kind of hit it off. And it is, it's really nice to kind of go on your ship and be able to kind of spot your cabin from afar by having something on your cabin door um, that is personalized to you, whether it's your family name or whether it's the itinerary you're doing. Um, some people join groups and they share them amount. They make bulk and they give them to other people type of things. So then you're all part mm. of this group together. It's a really nice way. So definitely, I think it's great. If the guys want to find the ones you've got at the moment, anyway, where's the best place for the guys to find the ones you've got already released? If you go on cruisingwithkids.co.uk, and we've actually got under cruise craft, click down, and there's a crew, there's two cruise door categories. So yeah, we're there. Um, but we've got some lovely ones already. Um, and because we draw and we're, we're we're drawing it off of our other sites, which are just full of thousands of files. Um, we're building them up quite quickly. So we've got a nice world and we're building up um, the icons to go around it. So we've got, at the moment, we've got Paris on, we've got a fish to flo- to just float around the world. But then we've got um, the Coliseum that's going on this week. And then basically when you're on a cruise, you can just put icons from your cruise port all around the world. So um, that's a really That'd good That'd be nice, one. yeah. Uh, so yes. Yeah. We've got some, I've got some flip flops. We've got a pineapple. So <laughs> if you want a pineapple, we've got one. <laughs> and we've talked about this earlier. You don't. Everybody can like pineapples. If you like pineapples, put them on your door the right way. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I, um, I mean, this is such a loaded conversation and the whole pineapple thing. But no, definitely. Like we were saying before the podcast, it is a tropical fruit, and cruises go to the tropical parts of the world. So you can just like pineapples. You don't have to be saying that you're a swinger at all. If you are, great. Then you've got a, you can do you can get one for that as well. But you don't necessarily have to be a swinger to have a pineapple on your door. <laughs> I'm going to put round this. I I like pineapples. I'm not a swinger. Just so that people <laughs> the like pineapples can have a pineapple on the door, and you know, live and let live. But pineapples aren't exclusive. Sarah is on a one woman mission to reclaim pineapples for the cruising community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pineapples are flamingos. <laughs> are for everyone. Not like dogs aren't just for Christmas. Pineapples aren't just for swingers. <laughs> 
but sometimes I do think that the things that don't make it into the podcast that sometimes creep into the podcast. Like we were chatting about this before the episode, and we were like, "Well, but let's get on with the episode. Let's be professional now." And then, guaranteed, halfway through the podcast, we're like, ah, "Let's just talk yeah. about whatever we want." Oh, let's get the window. Yeah. <laughs> so, right, we better wrap this up, haven't we? Because I have yeah. packing to do. Oh, I'm very jealous. I got. I'm. I am packing, but I'm packing for two weeks' time rather than this weekend. But yeah, yeah. guys, if any of you are interested in booking a cruise and you do want to sail the Mediterranean um, from the UK and you live in the UK, then definitely I would love to help you as well. You can find me online under magical-traveler.com. I've just launched my new cruise search tool. It is based on UK prices. A lot of Americans are using it. Great, love it. Can't help you. Um, but you can go in there now and you can search by kind of dates. You can search by departure port. You can search by cruise brand. And um, it'll bring up all the cruises for you and give you a guide price on there. Always reach out to me for kind of the best price I can offer you. But just as a top level area anyway, that'll give you an idea of what's available when, what ports they're going to and what brands are sailing there. Not all brands are on there, but the majority of the brands you know and love will be. Um, so I'll be doing a bit of a better deep dive into that on my YouTube at some point. But just to say, I'm very proud. It took me weeks to get it on my website, but that's now live. Um, so use that and you can inquire from there and it sends me a link. Sorry, that was a really big sales pitch. I didn't really plan to do that. That was just, it's been my week <laughs> getting this thing live. Do you know what though? <laughs> and you got it wrong because you said if you want to book a cruise from the Mediterranean, you, you book cruises all over the world. <laughs> I do. I know. But we're talking about the Med. So that was kind of the tenuous link of like. We've just booked caribbean with you on celebrity so i know you do so no i know it was just a, a tenuous link we are talking about the med yeah. so if you are interested in also yeah. saying in the meds off the back of this episode but, but other destinations other are pools. available <laughs> right we need to end this because this is just leave, that in. leave it in <laughs> yeah um and if you want to find us you can find us on cruising for all cruising for kids and orlando resort next week Wait in, guys. We hope you've enjoyed this one. And we'll see you on the next one live from which ship Mariner, isn't it? You're going on Mariner of the Seas. Yes. Yeah. In two Very weeks. Excited. All the best, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.